Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in IBM Power Systems Europe in AX and Linux. In this series of videos on NJMON, we're now looking at the data, in particular the tags, measures, and statistics. Understanding the data will actually help you find the right stats when it comes to drawing graphs. The organization of the data is slightly different for NJMON and NIMON. The J in NJMON is for JSON data and the I is for influx line protocol data. Now the statistics are exactly the same. The numbers will be identical and the names of the stats will all be identical, but there's two different sorts of output. Let's look at these things called tags. Tags are attached to all the stats. These are to help you find the data you actually want. So one of the important things is the host or the host name of the where the data was collected. We also may want to group or our host by operating system like AOX or Linux. Sometimes you may want to say, well, I just want to look at the Power 8 machines or the Power 9 machines. Also, if you've got multiple virtual machines running on a server, then if you group them together by serial number, you'll find all the virtual machines quite easily in the data. Bit of an IBMism, we have the MTM, the machine type model. For non-IBM hardware, we do the similar sorts of things if we can find it. These tags are used to list or select the data that we actually want to look at on a particular graph. We've already covered that earlier in the series when we wanted to say, just give me a list of all the host names that are running AIX, for example, and then you can look at a dashboard in Grafana that will relate to that particular type of data. Similar sort of thing with uh, Linux data, of course. In InfluxDB, there's a term called a measure. It's like a statistical area. Now, that's all a bit vague. If we look at computers, the measures are pretty obvious, like the things we actually have in the computer, which will generate numbers that we actually want to look at and graph. So CPUs, memory disks, networks, file systems, NFS, uh, configuration data as well, our kernel stats, and a whole load more as well. So these are the measures. In each of those measures, there's a group of statistics. So for CPUs, we have uh, the utilization numbers that we're familiar with. For memory, the sizes of it, how much of it's free, what sort of use is it being put to. Disks, read, write, kilobytes per second, and the actual operations per second. Similar sort of things for network. For some reason, we call them different names, but they are the same thing, really. The uh, packets going up and down and how much data is actually flowing. File systems are in there as well. We can guess what those are full of. It's the output of the DF command. Also, things like uh, kernel stats. We have uh, run queue and number of processes running and information about the actual kernel. So we have the measures, the broad areas, and then we have the actual statistics in detail for each of these measures. But it's not quite that simple because a lot of these resources uh, or measures uh, actually have multiples of them. Right? We don't have one CPU. We have lots of CPUs. Same with disks, uh, networks, file systems, processes in particular. Uh, we have lots of them. So we actually want perhaps the total CPU utilizations, but then we want to see the utilization for each of the CPUs or for each of the disks to find out which is the hot disk. The networks, which networks take in the bulk of the load and there's something we can do about it. Are systems filling up and which processes are actually soaking up the CPU power? Maybe we can do some tuning. So all of these then um, have multiple instances and they're not fixed, are they? Uh, with a modern computer, we can actually change the number of CPUs even on the fly. Um, certainly we can restart it with less CPUs in a virtual machine, for example. Similar sorts of things with disks and networks. Every machine is going to come up with a different number of those uh, resources. So we have to have that built into the data so that they can change, maybe on a reboot or maybe actually on the fly. So how's that done? Well, in inline protocol, it'll look a bit like this we have the measure uh, for the total CPU of the computer and then we have the stats to it and then we have a measure CPUs with an S and then we put in an extra tag saying CPU 0, CPU 1, CPU 2 and then the utilization for the individual CPUs and I hope you can work out a similar sort of thing that happens with disks and networks. This is very simple to understand in uh, line protocol terms because it's all on one line. We have the measure, the, the tag for like CPU1, and then we'll have the, the utilization numbers right next to it. In JSON, it looks uh, slightly different, but very much organized the same way. So we have the CPU total as a name, and then we'll have the stats listed in curly braces, and then we'll have CPUs. 
And then inside that, we don't have individual stats. We actually have another JSON structure. So we have another one, a, a substructure for CPU zero and its utilization, CPU one and its utilization, and so forth to cover the number of CPUs. And again, the same for a disk, network, file system, processes, whatever. So you may have lucky guesses. You're looking for the processes run queue, and you may guess that that will be in the kernel measure, and you're looking for something called run queue. But is that run queue or run queue or run queue or run queue? Well, you could go looking for it in Grafana. You'd select the kernel, and then it gives you a list of resources, and you go looking for the one you want. But it's a lot better if we can see all this on one page as documentation, and we can actually then discover some stats that we hadn't thought of that's actually there and that we'd actually want to graph. So how do we do that? Well, we could take the JSON data, and we'd probably use Python to uh, load that and explore the details in it and list them out into a report. Or we could take the NIMON data, it's line protocol, it's line by line, and then we could use a shell script to create the measures and stats. Well, I decided to do the NIMON way of doing this. So we'll run NIMON to get the data and see the measures. Don't forget, though, that the measures and stats will be exactly the same in the JSON data, so it doesn't matter which way we take it. I may go and write the Python one just for a, a bit of fun. Now I'm going to show you the details of that uh, live. The way we do that is we're going to run NIMON, Linux or AX, doesn't matter. We're going to ask it to give us one set of stats after one second and save it in a file. And then we're going to use this shell script, NIMON list stats, give it the file name, save it into a, a file because uh, it's quite big. And then we'll uh, actually can have a look at the report and see what's going on. Actually, this is a very useful exercise because it told me how many measures and stats we actually get. On the AIX side, for a fairly small virtual machine, two CPU cores, four disks, two networks, we're getting 1,400 stats. You can see there's 22 measures uh, in that. On the, the Linux side, uh, similar sort of uh, config, uh, just one disk or one network in this case, and uh, 840 stats or so. Now, if you switched on the collecting the process stats, that could go up by a factor of 10 or 100 if you've got lots of processes running that really balloons out the number of stats so be careful for that only collect those if you really want to look at them so here i am on my favorite aox machine here's nimon not a very big program and here's the shell script it's not even very large is it so let's run nimon we're going to ask it to do one capture after waiting one second and put the output into a file so that's the uh, pid has been put out there we can use that to stop it later on if we wanted to capture that in a shell script uh, leave it a couple of seconds and just let it finish because there's a little bit of a startup time and there we go machine is called uh, blue and errors file is uh, none, of, none of those and influx LP, this is the line protocol file in here, 40k. And so we'll have a little quick look under the hood here. You're not really meant to have to do any of this sort of thing, but uh, it's not rocket science in here. Well, <laughs> it looks complicated, doesn't it? But um, let's actually look for something in particular. Let's look for, let's look at the physical CPU total stats. Here we go. I'll just um, open that. And open that here's the actual record and uh, the name of the measure is is this thing the first thing on the line with a comma at the end the other things separated by commas in here are the tags you'll see these are repeated for every single measure that we're actually making so we have in the machine is called blue that's the host name it's aix it's in power 8 compatibility mode so i can move it between power 8 and power 9 machines uh, the serial number is here so we could find out the other lpos on this machine if you want to that's all in there. Here's the MTM. This means it's a Power 9 scale out model 2 4. And um, then there's a space. That's significant. That ends the tags in here. And then we have the statistics. So this is the utilization numbers, user system, weight, and idle. Then there's actually um, three spaces in here. Get back up to this line and go to the end. You'll see one, two, three spaces. When this line is actually sent to InfluxDB, normally there'd be a timestamp in here. So that, I'm not bothering to do that because if he finds three spaces, there's oh, there's no timestamp here. I will put the timestamp on it of when it arrived at InfluxDB. That means if all my virtual machines and machines are in different time zones or the time differences between them, uh, the actual time 
is the time it got to the database. Now that's a fraction of a second after the time it was actually measured, but that's good enough. And it means if you like, the InfluxDB is the arbiter of what is the actual time. And then we can sync up all our graphs very quickly. Okay, uh, so this is uh, a simple one. If we look at perhaps um, disks, we'll have a look at a more complicated one. Uh, we'll open that there. Open it. Here's the record, you see it's a lot bigger. So it's disks with an S in here, so there's multiple of them. Um, hit same, same tags as before, it's identical to the same or every time. Ah, but now instead of a space, we now have a comma and this disk name, hdisk6. Then there's a description of it as a virtual SCSI device, and this is a scratch volume group, and down below the root volume group. And then we have all the stats, the block sizes, the free, the, the data rates, the number of transfers are actually very low in here. I took the snapshot when the machine was largely idle, so we don't see very much. But we can see uh, disks, 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 and disks. And then, uh, then we have the actual disk totals in here as well, as we covered before. Right, if we come out of here and we run our script and we give it the, if we do it like this, We'll see it outputs all the stats and all zooms off the screen. Well, that's not much help, is it? So let, let's do that again and save the outputs of stats.txt. You can name these anything you like, but uh, that will do. Stat. One, two, three. Now it's done. All right, now if we VI that, then we can have a look at it and browse up and down. So it's t reminding you of the file. This is like a report. So this is the input file, so you want to know where the data came from. Here's the, the tags. We looked at those. Uh, the measures, if they've got an I on the end, then it's an in, only an integer is allowed to go into that stat. We'll look at that in a second. Otherwise, there's a string which has double quotes um, or a floating point number and uh, njmon and imon use uh, three decimal places. Okay, so if we go down to CPU, let's go total. Okay, there's the stats for the, the utilization in total for the physical CPUs rather than the logicals, which are the threads and things. Up in here, you can actually see there's an, there's an I in here because these are integers for the individual CPUs. If we go down to disks, we can see a similar sort of thing. In here, oh, oh, this is the total disk measure at the top of what's going on with our disks. As you saw, there was nothing actually happening. If we go up a half a page, then we have disks with an S. And it's just my convention. Um, and we have a disk name, hdisk1. And we'll see that that's in uh, root VG. And again, all the stats and the queued lengths and timeouts and all those sorts of things you can get off the disk these days. You can actually see how big it is. That's 128 gigabytes. Okay, so that, that's what we get in a report. Then we can do things like uh, looking for a kernel down in here. And so we can see all the kernel stats. Uh, there's a couple of pages of them actually. So we've got process switches and system calls in that second. You know, nearly 10,000 system calls in that second. Uh, here's the run queue. No, these are two special specific numbers in here. These are the instantaneous numbers. This is the actual run queue in here, the average over the duration, and it turned out to be zero. So while we were doing the capture, there was no processes actually running. Now, if you want to know more and see some sample output, then I've created an article on the AirExpert blog. You can see the two URLs gets to the same place. I'll put those in the YouTube description so you can uh, cut and paste them out. You can download the script from there. It's only 20 lines. And you can also download that from the NJMON website. Now, a little bit of secret source in here. If you're on an AIX, then most of the stats come on AIX from this thing called the libperfstat library, part of AIX. There's a different function for each of the measure. There's other different areas. So there's different functions that you call to get the data for your CPUs, networks, and all that. And then the statistic names are actually the names of the members of the C structure that we actually fetch down from the kernel. Now, the stats are documented as a C programmer in user include libperfstat dot h and next to each of them is a one line comment describing what the stat is and in a lot of cases that can actually help you understand what the number actually represents so that's it for this one thank you very much for joining us you can see the njmon url down the bottom the next time up we're looking at how to add your own stats into the njmon database Thumbs up if you like this video and you've learned something and please subscribe and then you'll be told when the next video is out and available.